so quite a few people in the comments over the last couple years have asked me to do a walk around of some of the bikes that have been on the channel. So right now I have most of the bikes here, so check them out. So this bike here, I think we picked up on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. I get a lot of bikes on there, on Craigslist or um, on Facebook Marketplace or the yard sales. So this one started out as a 24 volt electric kids bike. And then I converted it to a Electro & Co QS90 72 volt kit. So I used one of their um, 72 volt lithium ion batteries and I made up a custom battery tray, a custom motor mount, a 428 sprocket, and the bike does, I think, around 55 miles an hour. So I added a just a single piston hydraulic disc brake. So I figured if it's going to go that fast, I might as well add a hydraulic brake. Going 55 miles an hour on this bike feels like you're going 100. I mean, it's so tiny. So anyway, yeah, this bike turned out to be fun. I have quite a few race videos on this bike on the e-bike playlist. And then I have the Predator 212 quad with a juggernaut. I added the Nerf bars. Bought this quad at a yard sale here in Kingman. We went ahead and threw a Predator 212 Hemi on it, with the VM22. I think it's got a Mod 2 cam and a uh, GX160 head, built rod, built flywheel. Added a little bit bigger rear sprocket, a chain tensioner. Then I used the stock exhaust and then used a 212 flange, welded it up in a custom motor mount. Definitely a lot faster than it was um, stock with the 110. So anyway, I got a full build video on this quad. Then you have the Extreme 110 pit bike. This thing runs perfect. This thing literally sat in somebody's garage in Nevada for 10 years. That's why it's in such great shape. So I got a video on this, just getting it running. I think I put a, uh, a carb on it and a fuel shutoff valve and a battery. But other than that, man, this thing runs perfect. They even had it registered at one time. Then you have this crotch rocket. And I don't know what brand this is or what CC it is. It was given to me and he says it actually runs. It has all the wiring for the lighting in the back and in the front and a speedometer. Got all your uh, turn signals and the headlights, and the disc brakes. It looks like it's in pretty good shape. Then we have the Volts GTS bike which is a mildly built Predator 224. It does have a built rod, Mod 2 cam, a stock head with a 28 millimeter PWK carb, a cast flywheel. I had a lot of chrome work done on this thing. I had the uh, blower housing chromes, the header pipe, the sprocket. I had it polished and then the hub. It has a steering stabilizer, which I have a video on. A aluminum plate motor mount, a billet side cover. And the chain guard, or the clutch guard, is a 3D Motorsports manual clutch chain guard. Yeah, I like the, uh, the scrub brakes on these bikes. It's kind of old school. And right now, I'm just running a max torque on this bike, just to cruise it around town. Because it's a pretty mild build. So I vented the uh, valve cover on here. Another cool thing is the aluminum catch can mount and the one-way check valve. So later on, I'll probably upgrade this engine more on this bike. So and then I have Megamoto 8105. This is the first bike that I actually stretched. So I did a six inch stretch on it. Hydraulic front brake from Go Power Sports. It's actually based off of their uh, suspension roller bike. So this bike, I've tried all different kind of parts on heads and cams, and so right now it has a Tillerson 225 in it with a Volts cam, a small valve head, a 24 millimeter flat slide. But who knows what else I'll end up testing on this bike? And this one here has the uh, same chain guard on there, the 3D Motorsports clutch guard, chain guard, a built side cover. Now this bike I actually used a cart motor mount. 
It's running an RLV gold on gold chain, an F&B pipe that I actually shortened a little bit to fit inside the frame here. Added the handlebar risers and also swapped out the handlebars. Got the aluminum catch can mount. Another cool thing that I really like on this bike is that um, dynamic engine development valve cover. It's got the baffles in there. That thing is beefy, man, that valve cover. And it's running a uh, Rev 1.2 ratio rockers. So that's a combo for right now on this bike, but who knows, man, I'm always changing this bike, testing different stuff on it. So anyway, there's an entire build video on this on the uh, Megamoto playlist. And then we have the Azusa bike first bike I actually had on the channel and this is one of the older model Azusa bikes with the uh, straight bars so I got this bike over in California off of Craigslist and it was already powder coated when I got it and it had a stock Predator 212 on it so the new build on this bike is a Predator 212 built rod built flywheel a rattlesnake 252 cam I made a custom gas tank on this one because the frame was so small this is out of a car overflow tank I'll have to do a video on it sometime. Then of course you just got the VM22 on it. Just a really mild build. It's got the billet side cover. And again, the 3D manual clutch chain guard on here. And just your basic header pipe. Yeah, it's a really mild build, but I had this bike around like 70 miles an hour. It's such a small bike. It has the original seat with the white border. And of course you got the five inch wheels. So I got quite a few different videos on this bike on the May bike playlist. And then we have the Rascal Light mini bike from Go Power Sports. So I did quite a bit to this bike, to the Coleman three horse. So it has a 19 millimeter slide carb intake manifold from um, affordable go-karts. And then it has an aftermarket cam from, from affordable go-karts. It's actually a 79cc Predator cam that you send to them and they grind the cam and send it back. So it's got the uh, aftermarket cam, 22 pound springs. So it has the ARC billet flywheel. It has 50,000 shaved off the head. I don't think I've put that video out yet. And a slick on the back and then a street tire on the front. And then it's also running a long header pipe with a baffle. So it's kind of a cool bike. I got this bike up to right at 50 miles an hour with the three horse. So it actually runs pretty good. So there's quite a few build videos on this bike on the channel. So then we have the CC100X that I picked up off of Craigslist out of Phoenix. Went down there and grabbed this bike. And I pulled the stock engine off of it. And first I installed a Predator 212 on it. So this bike, if you look at the CC100X playlist, this thing has had, man, I don't know, like, 10, 15 different combos on it. Different engines, cams, carbs. So right now it has a $49, 179cc LCT snowblower engine that I picked up off eBay. Last year, you could pick up these engines for $49 all day on eBay. Now, I can't even find them on there. I mean, I can find LCTs, but they're really expensive on there now. And I added a hydraulic disc brake, just a single piston. I got a video on that. And this one too has a um, the 3D Motorsport manual clutch chain guard or clutch guard on it. I'm just running a max torque. A universal sprocket adapter on the back. So this has been a fun bike. Definitely have a lot of videos on this bike. Then we have the 2008 CRG Road Rebel cart. I made quite a few videos with this cart with the 3D manual clutch running a Predator 212 with various mods. We got this cart up to around 72 miles an hour with the 212. And I added a custom header pipe that I made out of a pit bike pipe and then used the pit bike muffler on there. But anyway, so I plan on doing a lot more videos with this, this uh, cart. <laughs> then I have a doodle bug, which I have tons of videos on the doodle bug playlist on the channel. And one of them is the Ram Air Intake. So this is a bike I had a lot of fun with. So I picked this bike up at a yard sale in Kingman, I think for a few hundred bucks. Street tires, which I picked up used. 
And this is a uh, multiple street tire on the back, six inch. And then I think it's the eight inch on the front. And you got the Tilly 212. And it's got a hot 265 cam in it right now, billet rod, billet flywheel with the springs. And then a 24 millimeter flat slide and a header pipe, at least for right now. And then I stretched the bike with one of Go Power Sports kits. And then did the dual piston brake, hydraulic brake. I also added a front hydraulic brake because the wheel already had the disc, so I figured I might as well add a brake to it. So I have a video on that. So this bike's running a 3D chain guard, a Hillard clutch, and a universal sprocket hub. This is actually one of my favorite bikes. It just handles really well with the stretch especially. It's nice and low. And I can add a lot of power to it, and it's not really wheelie happy. So this is another one of the first bikes we picked up on the channel. I don't know, like maybe the second or third bike. We added the tank inside the tank in the cargo compartment. I got a video on it. So we ran the 196 for quite a while on this bike, testing cams, carbs, heads, just various parts. And then we swapped it out for a Predator 212 with a GX160 head, 265 cam. That was one of the combos it had on it for a while, but then I swapped that out recently for this engine, which has a black Mamba 275 cam in it. And it has, of course, a VM22. Then I added a hydraulic disc brake on the back, which I have a video on. Handlebar risers and the handlebars. It's a lot more comfortable with the, with the uh, bars raised a little bit. Then I have the center exhaust that comes out underneath the seat there that I custom made, which I have a video on. Then of course it has the uh, torque converter for the Go Power Sports 30 series with the uh, Juggernaut. And then it has the Juggernaut tuner kit in here running the green spring. And then it's running a 42 rear sprocket, which is really good for my weight. I mean, it pulls me no problem. So go check out the CT200U EX playlist. I think there's like, I don't know, maybe 20 videos on this bike. Just testing different parts, different engines. So then we have the Megamoto 212. This is a completely stock Megamoto 212 from Go Power Sports. For me, this is a very comfortable bike. This bike has the Go Power Sports Megamoto 212 battery tray. It fits back under the frame here, out of the way. So that's a nice addition. And then I added a brake light, tail light, license plate light combo. So this bike is completely stock other than the lighting setup. So this is the bike that we used in the Phoenix hood ride video. I actually rode this bike in the hood ride and it ran a perfect, nice, comfortable bike. And it kept up with everybody pretty good. So let's see for being stock. Well, the only thing I actually did to make it a little bit faster was I uh, tied off the uh, governor spring. But other than that, the thing moved out pretty good. Kept up with everybody really well. Then we have this second Megamoto 212. So this bike is running a Predator 223 based off of an EC Carbs 58 millimeter stroker kit. Wildcat piston, EC rod, 275 cam, built flywheel, 28 millimeter PWK. And then I did a custom center exhaust on this one too with the pit bike exhaust, which sounds really good. And it keeps the pipe out of the way in the uh, custom tank mounts. And here I also use the handlebar risers and the uh, stock risers underneath them to raise the bars up. Definitely a lot more comfortable. And then I added the light kit to this bike with the lithium ion uh, battery pack, which I mounted under the seat. This bike is also running the 40 rear sprocket. So this bike does really well with the 40 rear sprocket. It does well over 60 miles an hour with the uh, 223. Definitely has a lot of power, even with the 40. The tooth has a lot of torque, a low end torque. Custom license plate light bracket on this one too. License plate light, tail light, brake light combo. And I mounted it to the uh, fender mount. Made it out of a piece of aluminum. Anyway, I got a video on that. Then it's running the Juggernaut. Another cool thing about these bikes, like I said before, they come with disc brakes. Yeah, these are definitely nice, comfortable bikes. Mega, Mega Moto 212. So then we have another e-bike, and this one's 
based off of a Megamoto 80105 frame. Then I added a swing arm that I got off of Amazon, which I have videos on. Then I put a hydraulic dual piston brake, Electro Co. EC4P motor, which is super torquey, mono shock, added the handlebar risers, it's running Electro Co.'s noisy cricket controller, which you can see right there, which is totally tunable with their app, which is really cool. Then you got the key switch with the voltmeter and the speed select, the chain tensioner, and the ultimate street tires. Yeah, this bike with an 80 amp battery hit around 65 miles an hour and it gets to zero to 30 in three seconds or less. I mean, it's quick. So definitely a fun bike. You can see the entire build video on the e-bike playlist. Then we have the micro bike and this is one of the first bikes that I've built on the channel. I added a Coleman three horse to this frame, the DB003 frame. I think it came with a 40cc engine to start with. So the only mods done to this engine are the internal and external governor removal. At one point I was running a 19 millimeter carb, now it's running the stock carb. It's running a header pipe and a universal sprocket hub. A very mild build, but the bike achieved right around 50 miles an hour in some of the videos. So if you want to see the build videos on this bike, check out the micro bike playlist. Then we have another Azusa bike that I picked up off of Craigslist again in Phoenix. And the bike came already powder coated. It had a stock Predator 212 that came with it that wasn't on the bike. So then I went ahead and added a Ghost and on the Ghost playlist, you can see where I added a billet flywheel and then got rid of the uh, rev limiter and the, uh, the rev limiting coil on here. So it definitely made a big difference on this bike with the Ghost. Other than that, it's an entirely stock Ghost other than the billet flywheel and the, um, and the coil. But on the playlist, I have tried different heads, carbs, clutches, gear ratios, all different stuff with the Ghost. So go check out the Ghost playlist. A couple things I like about this is the bike. For one, it has the five inch wheels. And then the other, it came with the ape hangers already on the bike, which make the bike super comfortable to ride. And then I added the um, tank and I didn't want to weld on the bike because it was already powder coated. So I made up these mounts out of aluminum. I got a video on it. And this is a ghetto bike tank. And I can't remember the exact brand of this chain guard, but you can get them on eBay. Just your standard clutch on there and a uh, RLV gold on black chain, still running the drum brake and a header pipe. Definitely a comfortable Azusa bike. And then this bike here is a work in progress. I'm waiting for the kit on this bike. I'm just gonna make an e-bike out of it, a QS138 e-bike. And this one here is based off of a Megamoto 8105 or a Coleman frame, I mean, same thing. The bike uses a Go Power Sports swing arm kit, which I converted to a mono shock, got rid of the dual shocks on the back, uses a Go Power Sports foot peg relocation bracket, and then a Go Power Sports suspension kit that also has the handlebar risers and the uh, Handlebars. I think I picked these up off Amazon. And of course, it's running the 428 sprocket for the for the e-bike kit, the Go Power Sports front brake, which worked on the aftermarket wheel, the street tire. It's an eight-inch wheel, and this is another wheel you can get on AliExpress. So this definitely will be a fun build once I get all the parts put together for it. Then we have the Bonanza bike. And this has a Duromax 208. So this is another bike we found on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. And we picked it up in Vegas. And I have quite a few videos on the uh, Bonanza bike playlist for this motor or this engine on this bike. And actually on the playlist, I was running a Briggs, I think three, three and a half words first. And then I swapped it out for the Duromax 208. So I did quite a bit of testing with the Duromax 208 on the Bonanza bike. Tested some heads carbs 
I'll have to throw this bike back together and start doing some more videos with it. Testing out the, uh, the Duramax. This engine actually runs pretty good. I mean, it's actually pretty fast. So then we have the QS120 e-bike. And this one's based off of a Coleman frame. Same as the Megamoto 8105. I mean, same frame. And I stretched it. And this is the bike that I took down to LA on the fastest mini bike in LA video. At that time, it was running an 80 amp battery. So now I've since upgraded the battery and the controller. And the battery is now a 300 amp battery. And with the controller tuned, it's running about 175 amps now. So it's a little bit faster than it was before. So definitely a good running bike. I've gotten this bike to uh, zero to 30 in the one second range. You can see the video on the e-bike playlist. So this thing has the front Go Power Sport suspension kit. And then of course the uh, handlebar risers and then the handlebars off of Amazon. Then of course you got the voltmeter which comes with the Electro & Co QS120 kit, which is pretty much plug and play. When I stretched this bike, I added a hydraulic dual piston brake on the back. 428 chain, the ultimate street tires. Volts cover the seat on this. And then I added a lighting kit in case I want to cruise it around at night. So, uh, Get the switched LED lights, and I got these picked up these lights off of Amazon. I think these are like 15 bucks for two. They're really rugged lights for 15 bucks, and they fit. What's cool about them? They fit directly on to a Megamoto 8105 or the Coleman frame. They bolt directly on with the hardware that comes with the light. I mean, there's no fabbing anything up or anything. They just bolt right on. Tail light, which I made up a mount for, and a brake light. And then the battery pack is mounted under the seat, so it has nothing to do with the battery on the e-bike. So you can run this lighting setup on a gas-powered bike or an e-bike, it doesn't matter. Lithium-ion battery pack. It's a 6,000 milliamp battery pack. So it runs these LEDs forever before you need to charge it. So it's really a cool battery setup. And it's out of the way, so you don't really see it or you don't see the wiring. This is the same lighting setup that I ran on the Megamoto 212s where the battery packs under the seat and hidden. I actually have one video on this bike where I installed it. I haven't put the video out yet, but I'll throw it out there. And then I got the video for the uh, Mega Motor 212 already out there for the lighting. <laughs> these e-bikes are definitely fun. I mean, these bikes hit around close to 70 miles an hour. I haven't even ran the bikes at their full potential yet as far as the amperage goes. Like I said, I'm only running like 175 amps right now through this bike. And it's capable of a lot more. I just need to upgrade the controller. The battery is definitely capable of more. The battery has a uh, 300 amp BMS. So people ask me all the time if I sell the bikes. And there was a few bikes that I've already sold that have been on the channel. Red MB200, the CT200U, another Coleman CT200U EX. And then of course we got the scare chair, which is not here right now, but we still have it. The three wheeled predator powered bicycle. So stay tuned, I have quite a few more builds and bikes in the works.